I don't think they allow you to curse, but you know what? When ha are you niggas going to? When are you <laughs> niggas going to unite and kill the police, mother blankers? Wow, now. I have a really good friend here. I have a lot of respect for him. I have seen a lot of his work, and he is one of the bravest. One of them men on this side of heaven, Colin Flaherty is with me. And he might be more banned online than than I am, <laughs> because they don't like him putting the truth out there, folks. He wrote, uh, white girls bleed, white girl bleed, white girl bleed a lot, and don't make the black kids angry. Don't make the black kids angry. Colin, welcome to the show again. Great to be back, Jesse. I think you're I think you're all over both of those books, by the way. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> How you been, man? I haven't seen Good. you in a minute. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. I don't get out to LA as much as I'd like to, but right. happy to be on your show. Yeah, you're looking well. Oh, thanks. I wanted to first ask are you aware well I know you are, you know who uh Elijah Cummins was, right? Yeah, I think he was the greatest uh, political figure in the history of the Republic, from what I've been reading in the paper the last couple of days. I know. It's so amazing to me to hear uh, some of the people response about him now that he did. When he was alive, we all knew that he was an evil, angry, nasty, selfish person, and that he had been over— he was— uh, he had been the Congress for uh, the Boston area. I mean, not Boston, but um, Baltimore. Baltimore area for a while. The area is in a mess. It's worse, than, it's worse than it was before he took over. But when he died, the people started lying about him, talking about how wonderful he he was. Why do people do that? You know, I, I don't know. I was so happy to see your tweets on that because I was sitting there thinking the same thing. I was, But I didn't have the nerve to tweet what you tweeted, which was the truth about Elijah Cummings. Uh, but, you know, everybody was going, man, all the people in Baltimore were saying, yeah, he was a real inspiration to me. <laughs> he was my mentor. And it's like, have you looked at Baltimore? Right. It's not something we should be bragging about. It's so amazing. He really got a pass, but he's gone. And so, you know, he'll be re he'll be replaced by someone Probably worse. Than yeah. Worse. Some people are saying it might be his wife, and she's being investigated or has been investigated from some crooked deals as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if they pick another black person who is no good, because most black people are not going to vote for good people. They only vote for you when you're rotten to the core. Well, if, uh, if Elijah Cummings' wife took the gig, she'd probably have to take a pay cut. <laughs> That's amazing. I um I um I want to ask you about racism. Um, you heard of this woman by the name of Brittany Cooper, I believe, the really yeah, fat black lady. Like, she's like the popular woman. That she, you know, the, the liberals they go through popular people. A couple of years ago it was Tony Easy Coates, then it was Michelle Alexander. Brittany Cooper is very popular this year. And she blamed uh, racism on her fatness, and people are not correcting her. How in the world can you blame racism for being fat and no one says anything? Well, she wrote a book called Eloquent Rage. She says being pissed off at white people is her superpower. <laughs> really, that's what she does. And this book has sold a lot of copies. That's amazing. So she goes on this, she goes on this show that you and I are talking about. And she and the weird thing is, so she says that Trump and white people and white racism are responsible for her, her weight problems. Then they cut to the audience. There's a lot of women in that audience. What do they all do? They all going, yeah, that's right, right, yeah, yeah that's right. Preach on. So, I I don't know, you know, I don't know why so many people they feel like it's so it's so appealing to them not to take responsibility for their own lives and yes. just to blame it on people. I don't know. That must be like a good feeling or something. Do you believe that black people really believe that uh, racism, there's such a thing called racism holding them back? Or is it all an act now just to manipulate white people and others? I believe a lot of people sincerely believe that white people are really holding them back. Uh, I just see too much of it. I, you know, I see a lot of people. I see a lot of people reading off the same script. 
But just for example, I was out in my front lawn about a month ago with one of my buddies we call True to Roof, and a couple of my neighbors came by, a couple of black guys. We're really sitting there unknown for a long time. We're sitting there talking to him. And one guy, kind of a newer guy, he started talking about the the uh, police shootings. So I said, okay, in Wilmington, where we live, what percentage of black people are shot by police versus shot by cop, by black people? He said, I think it's 50-50. <laughs> it's about 1,000 to 1. <laughs> And so I don't, you know, I don't, I didn't get any sense. This guy was reading from a script, you know, the, the education, the, 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 you know, there was a show yesterday on NPR where a psychologist was talking about all these black kids and black girls, their suicide attempts and successful is going up. And he said, it's because of their despair and their pain. <laughs> you think about what these kids learn, yeah. you know, from the earliest ages, that black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything. There's not a damn thing you can do about it because for the rest of your life and the rest of your your ancestors' lives, white people are going to be oppressing you. Good Lord, no wonder so many kids are in despair. Yes. Just, you know, the, the things they're learning is just, I mean, everybody has, don't, don't we all have to learn that we have a chance, we have a shot if we work, if we say we invest? We do, we know, we do what we're supposed to do. We have a chance. Yes. What do we have if you take that away from us? Nothing. Nothing. That's amazing. And so this whole idea of racism and the blacks are being taught over and over and over and over again from birth that it's an issue. What would it take to turn that around and start pushing the truth, whereas the truth is more heard than the lie? What would it take to turn that around? Well, I don't, you know, I don't know if there's a magic bullet, Jesse. I think what it's going to take is shows like yours, shows like mine, in a more humble fashion. And just, we just got to keep telling the truth. We got to keep chipping away, hoping it at some point this big lie, the big I call it the biggest lie of our generation, the hoax of black victimization. I just hope at some point it's just going to collapse on itself. And black people are just going to get tired of blaming white people for stuff, realizing when they blame us for stuff, you know, they lose all they, they lose any chance. Uh, they lose they lose so much when they do that. Right. That's right. I noticed that um, I don't hear from a lot of older people speaking the truth about what's really what life is about and how you have to deal with it. Where I just hear from the young people about all these lies and how bad America is and the racist thing. Where are the older people speak? Where are they? You know, it's funny you say that because. That's one of my big themes. It's like, we're, you know, in order to tell, we're going to need truth tellers. Right. We're going to need people that the, nobody's going to come tap them on the shoulder and say, come on back to HR, bring your stuff. So all these older white people and black people who are just seen it all but are not vulnerable to getting fired or scorned or whatever, we're really going to count on, we need, we're going to count on them to start telling the truth. I've been encouraging all these cops to retire, start a YouTube channel, start a video, start a, a podcast, start talking about what you see as the lie versus the truth. Right. So we'll see what happens. Amazing. Um, what did you think about the Republican uh, barging in on the Democrats so-called private meeting about impeachment uh, yesterday? I was wondering who it was. I didn't know Republicans acted like that. Me either. I was stunned. It was nice <laughs> to see it. <laughs> you know, uh, you were calling out a couple people the other day on Twitter for using the word lynching, and, and some people were objecting to that. Amazing. You know, I saw on Fox a young black guy. Who's a, he, he, they say he's a Republican, and he's a Republican consultant, and he comes on with a, a liberal uh, black uh, consultant. And he was so eager to, 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 to agree with his liberal counterpart that the word lynching, never should have used that. No, never, ever, ever. It's like the worst thing in the world. And I mean, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what the point of being such a, you know, so spineless about these right. things. I don't know why we have to give up everything all the time. Just like that word. I mean, that's not a, you know, that's not a word. That's right. Black people don't own that word either. It's, it's you know, that's just, a legal term. Right. You know, out in your neck of the woods, I did a video two years ago <laughs> about a lynching. Yeah. The cops arrested a black woman in a park. She just run out of a restaurant and they arrested her. All of a sudden they're surrounded by 20 people. 
and 20, 20 uh, black people, they took her out of custody of the police. That's lynching. Yes. It's that's a legal right. term. You yep. can be arrested for lynching. I, I've, I've said for a long time that most black people in the Republican Party are not really true Republicans. They're there because they have been told that there should be blacks in both parties. But and so you have many blacks who are in the Republican Party, but they still have the mindset of the Democrat, uh, Democratic Party. And they, too, believe that white people are racist. And uh, but so I'm not surprised to hear about this, whomever this black guy was going along with the Democrats, because you don't find many real, real, true conservative black people in the rep in the party. You know, listen, I, I get it. Every four years, the national Republicans, they they discover they have a problem that black people just don't want to vote Republican. Then they go out and find black people and they give them a bunch of money. And every four years, it's the same. And every four years, we're told, well, this is year is going to be different. Yeah. But at the same time, every time, like, a, a, a new personality comes along, my attitude is, okay, I want to see you go through the gauntlet. Yes. I want to see you go through a Trayvon Martin. I want to see you go through a lynching expression. <laughs> just a right. small controversy. Yep. And if you bail out during one of these gauntlets, it's like, what good are you? That's the Japanese curse, right? That's right. You have weak friends. <laughs> Amazing. I, I do want to say that when I saw the Republican barge in on the Democrats yesterday, I'm like, it's about time these spineless Right old Republicans stood up and fought back as though they were real men and stopped playing like they were little beta bells waiting on mama to take care of them. Yeah, it was a it was a good it was a good thing to see. Maybe we'll see more of it. Yeah. I read a report about Bernie Sanders and uh, he has endorsed a rapper. I guess this guy's a rapper by the name of Killer Mike. Oh, man. <laughs> Are you aware of that? <laughs> yeah, I'm all over that. Okay, Is it true that Killer Mike, Mike sing about killing cops? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the here, one of his biggest songs. I, pl I play this on my channel all the time. Here's the words. The, how much can I say on this show? <laughs> Nobody say what exactly it says? Well, I, I don't think they allow you to curse, but you know what? When are you niggas going to, <laughs> when are you niggas going to unite and kill the police mother blankers? Wow. Now, Killer Mike travels with Bernie Sanders in 2016, made a video a couple weeks ago reminding everybody he's still the king of all black people when it comes to Bernie Sanders. He's got a whole bunch of songs. He hates cops, tells black people to unite and kill the cops. And it's what's amazing to me is not that there's an ignorant person out there talking about killing cops. You mean to tell me not one reporter is going to ask Bernie Sanders? Wait, why Why is this guy called Killer Mike? And two, why does he advocate killing cops? And three, what are you doing in the same state with him, let alone the same stage? It's astonishing. It's easy to find. The song is called Run the Jewels. Well, I've seen the uh, Democrats get away with stuff like this all the time, Hillary Clinton and others. But if, if uh, Bernie Sanders was a Republican, and had someone like Killer Mike uh, um, endorsing him and try, it'll be a different story. There's a you double remember, standard. You remember what happened uh, when Rick Perry ran for president? They went to his ranch and they found some rock that somebody painted there like 50 years ago. They yeah. had some kind of racial slur on it. And that was the worst thing in the history of the world, something that happened 50 years ago he may or may not even know about. Now we got Bernie Sanders running around with Killer Mike and it doesn't seem to matter. And uh, it's just, i tell you what, Jesse, there's only one thing you can say about that. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I'm surprised that the Republicans, knowing that it's a double standard, that they give into these kind of attacks. I wouldn't care. I would do what I want to do because they do what they want to do. I just wouldn't cave into these false accusations and when the, Demo the Democrats start screaming and trying to call me racist, it just wouldn't bother me at all. Well, here's the thing. You know, on the you know, we covered this a lot on 2016. I covered, especially the Republicans, what they thought about Black Lives Matter, how they reacted to everyone. Yeah. And of the 17 Republicans running, 
All 15 of them express sympathy for Black Lives Matter. These are Republicans, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, uh, all those guys, um, except for two, Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. Yes. And so anyway, yes. Trump gets elected, flash forward. Next thing you know, Jared Kushner's coming up to him saying, hey, we got to do criminal justice reform. The underpinnings of criminal justice reform is that there are too many black people in prison for no reason whatsoever. It's all unfair. We got to let them out. And so now, you know, Trump's down with this. He's doing another seminar on a forum that on a, next month at a black college. And so here, I, I mean, I'm not a political guru, but he, I guess I don't think he realistically thinks that black people are going to vote for him in any large numbers. I think he, he wants a repeat of last time, which is they'll just stay home. That's why the Democrats absolutely 100 percent, I'll bet anybody a dollar on this, they have to have a black person on the ticket this time out. It's just a question who it's going to be. Yeah, I am surprised at the fear of white people and and, and in that they will not stand up and disagree with the blacks when the blacks are wrong. They came in. I'm not for this so-called criminal justice reform because you, they are letting out all these criminals, and those criminals are ending up back in the inner cities, in the communities, and now crime is going out of control. They're even going out to the suburbs now because they have been told, don't attack your own people. Go out into the suburbs. I used to hear that when I first moved to L.A., and now it has become the thing. So when these black criminals are getting out of these jails, they are ending up robbing and killing white people in, in the suburbs. You know, it's not just theory. I do these stories all the time. Uh, people that are, at, you know, the, the big buzz now is no bail, right? So you get arrested for really bad things. Next thing you know, back on the street. Yeah. I, a story. I have sto I've done about five stories in the last two weeks talking about people out of bail for murder. They go out and kill somebody again. Amazing. I mean, that's, see, that's criminal justice reform. It's like we can't criminalize poverty. We can't keep innocent people in jail till we convict them. So let's just let's let them out on the street for two or three years before we try them. And none of it makes any sense to me. But at the same time, there's a story floating around yesterday and today about Bed Bath and Beyond selling black pumpkins, black jack o' lanterns. <laughs> Did you see that? No. Yeah, and so a, a TV station in Ohio called them and goes, this is offensive. They couldn't take the pumpkins down quickly enough. So it's a national news story now. So you want you ask why white people are afraid, because everybody knows that they're, you know, if you work in a cubicle, if you're a teacher, a cop, fireman, EMT, whatever, that that tap on the shoulder saying you're out of here is just one you know, you, you have a black pumpkin on your porch. All of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> big bam, boom, you're gone. A lot of people know that. I remember, excuse me, when I, I saw this. That's why, that's, that speaks to your point about the old people. Yes. So the old people, definitely over 60 who are retired, whose families are out there on their own, who aren't vulnerable to this kind of blackmail and extortion, we're going to really have to depend on the old people to come in and start telling the truth about this nonsense because they're not vulnerable to this stuff. Sorry to interrupt. That's right. No, you're absolutely right. When I read about Killer Mike uh, uh, endorsing Bernie Sanders, I thought about when the liberals pretend to be so upset that President Trump, the great white hope, would not denounce David Duke. They had a hissy fit about that. But whenever they do it, it's no big deal. It's, uh, you know, the double standard is just so amazing. 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 That's why, you and I, that's why you and I have to just get out there and just keep telling the truth and yeah. lots of other. But here's the thing. <clears throat> so, what, you know, so I get I, you, you go through the same probably dynamic as I do. I've been kicked off YouTube lots of times, kicked off Facebook lots of times. But for every one person that gets kicked off of YouTube or Facebook, I think there's a thousand people who decide they're going to pull their punches. Yeah. So they, they're just not going to tell the truth. It's like, hey, I'm either going to make $10,000 a month on YouTube or I'm going to tell the truth. I can't do both. Right. I think a right. lot of people are pulling their punches now. That's amazing. Uh, we're running out of time here. Tell the folks how they can find you and get involved and you want to hear from them. 
I'm I'm the easiest person on the internet to find. You just put my name in there. I have a podcast. I have videos, books, the whole deal. Easy to find. Happy to hear from everybody and happy to be on the show. I talk about you a lot on 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 my show. Whenever I do, I remind people how you inspired me at the very beginning. How I was watching your videos about how black people just aren't into white people that much. Yeah. And, you know, instead of going through all these crazy, complicated explanations, it was like, oh, yeah, that explains it. <laughs> Not all this other stuff. Yeah. So I want people to remember my debt to you and all the great things you're doing out there and how much, uh, how important you, I call you the most important man in America, Mr. Jesse Lee Peterson. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I really appreciate you. One last question before we have to go to a break and end it. I read that um, one of your friends were attacked by a fella in uh, Wilmington. Yeah, it just happened. Just happened the other day, and it happened. You know, it was just. It was just. You know, just a. It was. It wasn't even out of the ordinary. He was in a decent part of town, walking home. A couple of black people came up, beat the hell out of him, broke the bones in his face, stole his car. They actually arrested him. That's amazing. And, um, <clears throat> it's a 70-year-old guy. And see, here's the problem with people at over 50, over 60, over 70. You know, we, they all think that we're about 30 years younger. Right, right. And we're targets. And so I was just telling them, I took him in the parking lot of McDonald's and I said, listen, you got to start carrying a gun. You got to get a concealed carry permit. Not possible in California, very possible where we are, yes. in Delaware. Yes. You just got to do it. Yeah, you have no other choice, really, because they hate white people. And it doesn't matter if you're white, male or female, they're coming after you and they know they can get away with it. So it's just getting worse. And this is why I've been telling white people for the last 29 years or so that they need to start speaking up and getting involved and Stand it up for themselves, because when you're weak, you bring out the worst in your enemy. And my concern is that if white people don't stand up, we're going to have a South Africa, mommy Africa situation in America, where the blacks took over Africa, and now the white people, land been taken away from them without compensation, and it's just a real mess. It's a mess. It, it's not sustainable. Whatever, wherever we are now— it, can't cannot stay like this. It's going to get a lot worse or a lot better. I don't know what the answer is, but you, what you just said is, I mean, you always say these things. It's like, you know, why does anybody even want to reply to what you just said? It's like 100 <laughs> percent true. Yeah. Colin, it's good to talk to you again, man. And whatever I can do to help. Uh, and I appreciate your kind words about me as well. And I'm glad you're my friend and I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let's, you know what? Let's talk about, I'm gonna, let's talk, let's remind people about Killer Mike this week. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. God bless you, my friend. See ya. All right. Amazing. I got to take a quick break. It's the bottom of the hour already. 888-775. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. <laughs>